You guys want to go to a movie? I hear there's one playing in New York City. I'm actually here in New York for a conference this week, but hey, if they're going to send me halfway across the country to another city, I'm going to check to see if they've got an Alamo that I have not yet visited. Turns out they do. This Alamo appears to be in an indoor urban shopping mall. A little bit different in style than the one in uh, Brooklyn, but same general idea. It's actually less creepy than I would have expected a closed shopping mall, or a mostly closed shopping mall, to be on a rainy Sunday night. The Chicago Alamo is above a UFC gym. The lower Manhattan appears to be below a tennis and pickleball establishment. The Alamo Lower Manhattan is on two levels. The upper level, where the main entrance leads, houses a merchandise shop, the ticket counter, and the press room. The press room is the name of the bar, and it's also the actual press room, the shop that houses the working letterpress, where the Alamo prints things like collectible postcards. The lower level has the theater auditoriums, the restrooms, and also Kim's Video. Kim's was a legendary New York City video store run by young man Kim. Kim's shop offered VHS tapes that may have included mainstream Hollywood movies, but more importantly, it featured weird stuff, from foreign films to corporate training videos to bizarre psychotronic television compilations and more. After expanding to multiple locations and then closing down and having its main collection shipped to Sicily, Kim's Video has been returned and reborn as Kim's Video Underground here at the Lower Manhattan Alamo. The entire collection is available to rent, or rather borrow, because it is all available free of charge. The Lower Manhattan Alamo has been christened the Ivan Reitman Theater, and in honor of Reitman, and in honor of New York City, it includes a photo op spot featuring the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man glowering over the rooftop of 550 Central Park West. <laughs> The auditoriums are very comfortable. There are 14 of them, and the one I was in was quite small. The whole thing is not quite as new and feature-rich as that Chicago Wrigleyville location. Uh, for example, it doesn't have those neat pivoting tables, but it is still a great place to sit and watch a movie. The staff was quite friendly. The service was fairly quick. All in all, this was a fascinating place to visit. But I was there to see a movie, specifically The Book of Clarence written and directed by James Samuel and starring Lakeith Stanfield. Stanfield works hard to carry a movie that really should have been better than it was. Think of this as a Jesus side story. In first century Judea, as Jesus' ministry has led him to Jerusalem in the final days before his crucifixion, a local ne'er-do-well named Clarence embarks on a scheme where he pretends to be a Messiah in order to scam the people out of their money only to find himself changed by the message that he preaches and by the people that he encounters along the way. The movie does some very interesting things. For example, the way that it portrays all of the citizens of Judea as black and the occupying Romans as white. Interesting choice. It sets up really powerful contrasts that certainly mean a lot today. But the tone jumps around erratically, and the writing sometimes gets sloppy. And in the end, it 
it tends to feel like some decent late night TV sketch comedy held together with kind of a, a varnish of undergraduate philosophizing. The pre-roll was not customized for this movie, which is kind of a shame because there are so many biblical epics and other material that they could have drawn upon for a pre-roll specifically for the Book of Clarence. It was kind of a generic collection of cartoons and music and other clips, and it was a fine pre-roll, a great thing to sit and watch and listen to while ordering, but it wasn't quite what I was hoping for. From what I hear of other people who go to Alamo Draft Houses, I seem to get more custom bespoke pre-rolls specifically made for certain features here in Colorado than some people seem to do in other parts of the country. If you go to the Alamo a lot in some other location, let me know in the comments, do you get custom pre-rolls for specific movies a lot, or do you get more of the generic pre-shows that I occasionally get? For dinner, I had the chicken tenders. They were good, but the tenders were not quite as crisp as I have had them in other locations, and the hatch green chili gravy seemed less spicy, but maybe that's an East Coast kitchen making a different choice than a Colorado kitchen. Well, thank you very much for joining me. If you liked this video, please click the like button. If you want to see more Draft House Diaries, please click subscribe. And if you want more reviews of theaters that I visited when I was away from home, check out this review of the Brooklyn Alamo Draft House, or maybe this review of the Chicago Alamo. I'll be back soon with more diary entries. In the meantime, enjoy your movies, and when you do, stay till the end of the credits.